Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to start this off by doing a quick um, overview of the program or of the event, and then I will uh, entertain questions. Uh, I'd appreciate it if everybody kind of mutes themselves until I'm done with the PowerPoint, and um, we'll go from there. Uh, going to so uh, come on. You're all here because this is your coaching or helping out with simple machines. Uh, if I will say up front, if you have done the, if you have coached this event any time in about the last five years, uh, nothing's changed. <laughs> uh, everything's been working well, and uh, I go by the idea of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, uh, I am George Martin, uh, along with my wife Artie, we're the event supervisors for this event. Uh, we've been elementary event supervisor since 1998. Uh, this particular, we started back in 98 doing simple machines. Uh, after a few years, uh, they decided to pause the event and we did a couple of other things. Uh, this iteration we've been doing since 2014. Uh, I want to direct you all to the elementary page of Macomb Science Olympiad, uh, where you can find the event rules and information on this event. Uh, find the simple machines, follow that through, find, scroll down and find information from the event supervisor. At this, on this page, uh, three things I want to draw your attention to. Um, Number one on there from the 2020 Event Coach Workshop, this is simply the handout that I have given out every whenever we do when we've done this as an in-person workshop. This is the handout I give. Uh, it's quite valid. Uh, the next item, number two. Uh, is really important. I want to direct you to this is a 12 page document which tell which gives you examples of all the types of questions that I might ask or that I might give the students during the uh, event and uh, pretty much an explanation of everything that I'm going to be trying to do. Uh, number three, um, uh, this refers to uh, the PowerPoint slides and a video from a workshop that I did back in 2014 when we restarted this event. Uh, still very useful. Um, nothing in that um, video or those slides has really changed, so feel free to use it. Um, all right. Are the slides of being seen? I'm sorry. Are the slides advancing yet or you're speaking off of something else? I'm not seeing the slides advance. You're not seeing it. OK, no, did you see slides haven't changed? Over? We are still on the first page. Yeah, I'm still looking at you. <laughs> really? No, I, uh, I see okay. that I see your presentation on. Uh, yeah. But it has not it has not moved. It is still on okay. the title page. Huh. So I when I advance the slide from my computer, you're not seeing it change. No. No. Really? No. You should reshare your uh, desktop. Unshare yeah. and then share. OK, let me You're showing that. the presenter's screen, not the not the full screen view. Actually, I'm not even seeing that myself, so I'm not sure. Hmm. No. So, All right, so let me try something. All right, let me go ahead and unshare. I will. OK. 
So I'm going to. Okay. Now, now we see it. And okay. you're on a third slide now. Huh. If I click so the you play. Can, George, the other, other way is to just click on the slide that's on your left hand side manually. Okay. If it's not playing, and okay. it should change. Let's, there you go. Now okay. you're on slide number six. Okay. Huh. That, that's interesting. Okay, well, I'll have to do it this way. All right. Um, all right, this is this is from the page on the web page where it shows uh, information from the event supervisor and the first three items that I talked about. Uh, those are all ones that I'd like you to go look at. Anything else there is just extra stuff. Okay. Uh, I want to uh, quickly address COVID protocols, uh, and you notice I marked that as TBD to be determined. <laughs> um, I we I expect that all the students are going to be required to wear a mask. Uh, uh, I'm not sure whether hand sanitizing is going to be required. Uh, I would certainly encourage it, but current information on COVID seems to indicate that that's not going to do a whole lot. Um, I know other protocols and um, plans for the day are going are up in the air at this point. Um, keep, you know, my best recommendation is just keep in touch with your uh, your uh, uh, team's uh, leader and find out, you know, because things could could change right up to the day of the event. All I can say. All right. So the event format. This is a station event. There will be 10 stations that the children will have to do. Uh, they get two minutes per station. 100 questions per station. Uh, which were actually worked out to 150 points. On the for the county competition, I will actually have two complete sets of the 10 stations set up uh, because I have to. I am going to have to deal with up to 18 teams at a time in a session. So the stations are I usually color code them so that the students. Uh, simply stick to one set of 10 and they get everything done. Uh, most of the stations will have some type of physical object or tool provided, uh, something that kids can pick up in their hands and, uh, you know, turn around and, and look at. And, and they'll be expected to identify which simple machines that object or tool represents. There will be one station that will have a frame containing two or more pulley setups. And then there will be one station dedicated to inclined planes, uh, which will have no object, uh, just pictures. Frankly, um, I haven't figured out a way to put an inclined plane on a tabletop that uh, will work well for what I wanna do. So pictures are the way we go. All right, test question. The test questions themselves are going to be in document protectors and they'll be taped down to the table so that they don't get don't move with the students. Um, I will provide scratch paper and uh, rulers uh, at each station. Uh, I will collect that scratch paper at the end. Uh, Students should bring in a pencil, not pens. Uh, generally, I have uh, plenty of extra pencils in case they forget or their pencil breaks or whatever. I will have that. Uh, students may bring in a clipboard if they wish. Uh, many of them like the idea of putting their answer sheet on a clipboard to carry it from station to station. 
I have no problem with that. However, uh, I will not allow any cell phones or calculators in the room. No calculators because, frankly, they don't need them. Okay, all questions will be in a multiple choice format. Now, that will include some that are the multiple choices, two choices, yes, no, or true, false. We'll be using the zip grade answer sheet. Um, we'll have these answer sheets pre-printed with team name and number to hand out to the students when they get there. Um, if you want to, you may download uh, the 100 question blank zip grade answer sheet from the elementary website. Uh, there's a link right on the event page to get to it. Um, the first five questions at each station are worth one point apiece, and they are all, they are all basically the same thing. Identify the simple machine. Um, the simplest variety of that a question would be, does the object on the table include a lever? Yes or no? A um, couple of the stations in where there isn't actually a physical object like that, there may be a series of pictures of items with sort of a match the picture to the simple machine. Again, these are all one point questions. And these questions will be used as the tiebreakers if needed. Okay. The second five questions. Second five questions at each station are all two point questions, and they're essentially concept questions. Um, the type of questions they may be, uh, they, the student may be asked to estimate mechanical advantage. In all cases, mechanical advantage is going to be ideal mechanical advantage. For our purposes, there is no friction. <laughs> that just complicates things way beyond the level that an elementary student should have to deal with. Um, there may be some whole, some simple calculations that need to be made to do that. Uh, however, uh, I will endeavor that those calculations will be whole numbers or simple fractions. Um, they, the a typical question there might be one of if I push down on the lever on the on one side of the lever with say a pound of pressure, how many pounds of load can I lift? That's the type of mechanical advantage estimate that they're going to have to do. Um, I may ask them to identify the correct formula for calculating mechanical advantage. So they need to at least be familiar with those. Um, I will, I may ask them to make a measurement. For example, I may ask them to measure the length of the effort arm of a lever. Uh, I will provide rulers to do this. Now, I reserve the right to select either English or metric units for that measurement. And the reason I do this is to try to keep the result to a whole number whenever possible. And since I'm using real world objects in most cases, um, I've got a kind of fudge things to to make that an easy measurement. Uh, all of the rulers I provide have both English and metric scale, so um, that shouldn't be an issue for, for the children, as long as they know which side of the ruler they use. Other questions will be, I will ask them to identify changes or trade-offs to force, distance, speed, or direction. I will ask, you know, does this simple machine change the direction of the force? Does, which moves faster, the effort of the load? Which moves farther, effort of the load? Um, does this machine increase the force or, or not? 
Um, other types of questions will be uh, maybe comparisons. I may ask them to compare different sizes or configurations. If I give them two different sizes of uh, of a screwdriver, say, uh, one with a very fat handle, one with a thin handle, and I ask them which one has more mechanical advantage or which one will produce more force. You know, they should be able to compare that. Um, on levers, uh, they will be asked in several, occasion, several cases to identify which class of lever is being used. And finally, uh, there may be one or two questions asking them to identify uh, again, this is kind of a comparison thing, but it'll, they'll be asked to compare two two machines and say which one will perform more work. Work being defined as force times distance. Okay. Um, on the day of the tournament, the way it'll work is the students will be greeted in the hallway. Uh, I will distribute their answer sheets to them give them some basic instructions, uh, mostly concerning moving to an empty station and not touching anything or opening the test booklet until told to. And then they will be admitted to the room. Uh, and of course, no observers are allowed. Uh, I will give additional instructions inside and answer any questions the students may have. The students will then move between stations uh, 10 stations, two minutes per station. So we're looking at approximately 20 minutes. Um, at which point uh, I will collect the answer sheets and have the students gather any personal items they brought in, and then they'll be dismissed. All of this has to happen in a 30 minute period. Okay, so preparing your students. I have some recommendations on preparing your students. Uh, first of all, yeah, get that sample question document and review that. I recommend that you obtain uh, whatever science textbook your elementary school is using, which covers simple machines. Typically, this is grade four, but depending on the textbook publisher, uh, that will vary. Um, and then I, I recommend that you have them practice identifying simple machines. Gather up common tools, kitchen implements, whatever you can get your hands on to, uh, to have them pick it up, look at it, decide what simple machine is part of it. You know, you can work with the, them on this. Um, you can supplement this with pictures. Um, that type of thing, and then have them practice the idea of estimating the mechanical advantage and discuss those trade-offs. Um, the best way to do this is just sit them down and put some stuff in front of them and have them talk it out. Okay. Um, optional. Um, there's a lot of number of books and, that they could get out of the library. One in particular that I recommend is called The Way Things Work by David McCauley. Uh, there's three iterations of this, this book. Um, the first one was The Way Things Work, then there was The New Way Things Work, and the most recent is The Way Things Work Now. <laughs> uh, for our purposes, uh, the portion on simple machines hasn't changed since the first edition, so <laughs> it won't matter which one you pick up. Uh, this is kind of a fun book for the for the kids because it discusses simple machines uh, from the standpoint of um, early man doing things with mammoths uh, using using mammoths and to demonstrate simple machines. It's, it's kind of fun. Okay, lastly, uh, many of you are gonna go out to the internet looking for more information. I encourage this. Um, if you search on simple machines, 
add the word science to your search term. There, in the past, uh, I believe they may still exist. There was, I have searched on just simple machines and come up with a whole bunch of links to a software company called Simple Machines and to a rock band that called themselves Simple Machines. So adding the word science will limit your search to more relevant stuff. Uh, you can also search on the individual machines. Um, one of the reasons I like to do this is there's a lot of information out there provide, uh, posted up by other teachers and educational organizations that include worksheets, lesson plans, videos, even some games the kids can play to learn about simple machines. So these are all, you know, there's uh, a lot of stuff out there that could possibly help you. Okay. Right now, district practice tournaments. There are three tournaments planned. Um, I expect, uh, it is my intent to be at all three of them. And, um, you know, when I do a, a, a district tournament, I try to run it as close to the county tournament as humanly possible so that they don't come into the county tournament and see something different. So, um, anyway, that's the plan. All right. And... Questions? Does anybody have any questions for me? Close that out. Okay, so, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. All right. Are, okay, I see a couple of people have their hands up. Um, let's see, uh, Susie, go ahead and unmute yourself and what's your question? Will this, um, PowerPoint presentation be available to us to review? Like, uh, is it on a website or email or anything like that? Um, Manish had mentioned earlier that they are, rec they are recording this. So you can go yes. back and, and look at it again. Yes, we are recording it. And if you prefer George. If you send me the presentation, then I can uh, post it as well. Okay. Yeah, and I will send him the, the PowerPoint, and then he can do that. Okay. Yeah, give, us, uh, give us about two, and, two days or so, and it should be posted. Okay. Uh, Angela has her hand up. Okay. Uh, bear with me. I'm new to this whole process. So um, do you recommend that we participate in these district practice tournaments? I recommend that all the kids do the practice, do one of the practices if they can. Um, that way, they when they get to the county tournament, it's, nothing is a surprise. And as I said, I try to run the district tournament as close to the um county tournament as possible again so that it's it, uh you know the kids are are comfortable with what they see on on tournament day okay i'm also i guess uh, assuming that in the science class the children are have are being taught these particular calculations these simple calculations you were talking about uh Typically, in the grade school class, I, I don't know that they actually get the, term, the formulas there. Um, you'd have to talk to the science, to, to the elementary teachers to find out what they're actually teaching. Um, I, my understanding is what they get in the classroom is just a basic overview. And for this tournament, obviously, we need to go beyond that. Uh, to stretch the kids to make the, to get them to learn more about the topic. Uh, so yeah, we we go a little bit we go a bit beyond what they'll get in the classroom. 
So how will the student get that information? Is the teacher willing to help us or is there is it in their uh, science book that we have to go above and beyond what they're teaching in class to to teach the kids at home? Well, that's what that's why you have coaches. Uh, and I'm assuming you're, you know, uh, that somebody, some volunteer parent, somebody else has been identified as the coach for this event, and they'll work directly with those kids. Uh, as I said, there's a use the material that's available. Let the kids watch some of the uh, like the workshop that I did. Uh, find some internet uh, materials to present them with, and yeah. You're going to have to go beyond what the classroom teacher does. That's the same for any of that. Okay. Okay, and then can this presentation be printed out once it's available? Yeah. Yeah, and anything on the on the elementary website or anything that that's done today, by all means, go ahead, use it. Okay. Uh, and like I said, th especially get that 12 page sample question document and work with that. Okay. Okay. All, All right. right. Uh, okay, Larry. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I missed before, um, but is this an individual event or are there in teamed up oh. in pairs or? Yeah. Now, my my mistake. I should have included that. Uh, yes, the it's a two a two student team. They work together. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Amanda. Hello. Um, this is my very first time ever doing Science Olympiad. Um, uh, as a parent, and, and as a like even as a kid, I never did it. So this is totally new yeah. to me. So. I just want to, um, I guess, try to understand. So I, so I have two girls in my group and they are going to be building a simple machine and then answering the questions that you kind of just went over. Correct. Is that how this They're works? Not, they are not required to build anything. Okay. When they come into the event, a simple when they go to each of the ten stations, we'll have a simple machine or pictures of simple machines at the station that they need to identify. Okay. Now, as I said, the best way to prepare them for this is to, um, you know, work with them ahead of time, present them with a variety of objects that they can pick up rotate, handle, and try to figure out what simple machines are there. The very first year that I did this event, absolutely every event at every every object at every station either came out of my kitchen drawer or my toolbox. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, the concept here of this event is to show the kids that simple machines are everywhere. They're in the real world. They're not just abstract concepts. Okay. Okay? All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Christian, you're next. Christian White? Thank you. Yep, that's that's uh, my son, but it's it's me, I'm Jennifer. Okay. Um, so quick cool question. <laughs> the, the reason I asked this is because my <laughs> children are also doing the rock hound. And yeah. in that particular competition, we're able to carry a, the kids are able to carry a chart with some identification things. Yeah. Is that possible in this or not at all? No, I don't recommend. I, I won't allow any kind of cheat sheets or anything like that in, okay. in for this one. I figured as much. I just wanted to be clear. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, Angela Flax, do you have another qu a question or is your flat another question? Show up? Yes. All right. Okay. So I, I notice here uh, that we're Angela is teamed up with a Savannah Wilson. Uh, I guess um, I'm not sure how we get in touch with Savannah to do we get together? And I mean, how does that work? <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
you're going to have you're going to have to talk to the head coach for your school and figure out how that's going to be handled. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, in the in past years pre COVID, you know there would be after school uh, sessions where all the kids would get together with the coaches and that kind of thing. I don't know how it's being handled right now. I'll be honest. Uh, and I'm sure it varies from one school to the next. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Alvin and Stephanie. Yeah, hi. Um, good afternoon. Just real quick. Um, other question. They're working in teams, so are they submitting one answer per pair for each? Because I, I know you said a clipboard. So is it just one clipboard, one answer sheet? They're, they're coming to agreement on what's the right answer for every every uh, question to submit as a team or or not? Yeah, ex exactly. One answer sheet per team. So the two students are expected to work together and come to agreement on the answers. Now, I, I will tell you, I, what I, I can tell you what I've observed in the past. Uh, I have observed some schools who will pair, uh, for the two students, they'll pair like a third grader with a fifth grader. And the fifth grader is expected to know all of this stuff, and the third grader basically is the scribe, <laughs> fills out the answer sheet. Um, I won't say that that's the best way to do it, uh, but it is one way I have seen it done. Um, usually, uh, the students are pretty good at working together on this. Uh, they do need to come to a, to a consensus on their answers, though. Okay. Uh, let's see. Jason Hendrickson, or do you have a question? You had a question about the the sample question pack. Yeah. For, for those questions, do you have an answer key for those, or because I didn't see one on the website and I didn't see one attached to the packet. Okay. Have you not you've not looked at it yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. I was scrolling through it okay. um, just for a little bit, and I didn't see any you know question or the answers which ones were marked right or wrong or uh, answer key or mm -hmm. anything. No, I, I I didn't think an answer key was necessary for that. Oh. I think it's it's it, it's pretty self evident what they are. Okay, yeah, uh, I didn't the look too hard. I was just skimming through it. Yeah, the purpose of this was to give you an I to let you see how the questions would be formatted. Oh, okay, and the types of questions. Uh, it was not to give you a sample test. Oh, okay. That was not. That was not the intent. OK, thank you. Sure. OK. Uh, if you if I've answered your question, go ahead and take your your put your hand down. Otherwise, I'm going to assume these people have an have another question. Uh, OK, a man. No, a uh, Christian, did you have another question? I do actually. Um, okay. The question I have is um, we have obviously that we have the two children on our team plus an alternate. When it comes to the practice tournament or the actual county tournament, um, let's say all three of them are healthy, you know, thank goodness. And who, do I get to choose? Um, do we get to choose who are maybe like the two strongest participants? in this in this challenge to 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 do to go into the the, the into the, the the tournament room yeah. or does it have to be the top two that were listed as leads um hey, that George, decision, George yeah, can go I ahead. would you mind if I take this one real quick yeah go so, ahead Manish yep so there is a limit of there is a maximum limit of 16 or 17 kids per team because we added this, so I, I may be wrong from what I'm recollecting from the top of my head. So team is consisting of 16 kids, and those names have to be turned in prior to the tournament. Okay. And you have to decide, your head coach has to decide who is on the team and who is, who is not on the team. 
If you have okay. extra kids, you are allowed to register a secondary team that competes but does not compete in the main category. So if you have five extra kids beyond your 17, your head coach can register for an alternate team. Okay. But only two kids are allowed. And no, I, I get I get that. How soon ahead of time of the of the, the, the practice or the county tournament do we have to submit our you know two children's names? So every every county tur tournament is diff every district tournament is different. Okay. Meaning, you know, South Macomb may allow multiple teams to go in. Okay. Utica does not allow multiple teams to go in. So okay. that is something to be seen. But for the main tournament, a team of 17 that is registered with the name is allowed. And okay. those 17 can practice and they are given a wristband and so on and so forth. So okay, then let me ask this one last question then. And so say we, we register the two children as being the participants in that in that tournament. And then the day of the tournament, one of them is ill. I cannot have the alternate student step step in. So it's it's a little bit more complex than me just answering that. But generally speaking, yes, because that one kid is probably in two te two different teams, right? Right. Two different mm -hmm. events. Right. So I think you are better off asking this question in the FAQ general section, okay. and then John Ogden will reply to that. Okay. All right, then. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for what it's worth, uh, a number of the district tournaments in the past have allowed the alternates. And uh, because it's strictly a practice, uh, there have been times when a school has said, I want, they want to send three kids in. And I've allowed that. But that's just its practices. Uh, county, I can't do that. That makes okay. sense. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Um, I'm okay. Susie. Hi. Sorry. I don't know if, if you already said this. You said that this this um, PowerPoint and the video are, is going to be posted afterwards, about two days afterwards. Is that on the MacombScienceOlympiad.com website or what website will that be posted on? Yes, okay. on macomso.org website. And if you if you go to the 20, if you go to the, the current rules, current tournament 2022, you will see last year's stuff is posted there. And all that will be cleaned up in next two days with the newer videos, the newer links. The video links will also be sent to the head coach to pass it on to uh, all the coaches under the head coach. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands up. If there are no further questions, I'll hand it back over to Manish. And thank yeah, you I all don't... for coming. Yep, thank you for coming. Uh, I don't have any other questions. If you guys have a question, we can hang around and answer them. But uh, if you don't, then uh, I'll run to help out in the next event. Yeah, there is a there is a point uh, a spot on each event on the elementary science Olympiad website where you can submit questions, and I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. If you have, if you think of something else, so okay.